everyone i am assistant professor urmi shah from itict department of lg institute of engineering and technology in today's session i will be discussing or moving forward with the first unit of electronic switching system in the subject telecommunication engineering so let's move ahead with session number 5 of our telecommunication engineering subject so what are the topics which we have covered in the previous section so we had learned about the functions of switching system what is switching system how switching systems are classified in terms of manual and automatic switching system that we have seen up till now in today's session these are the following topics that i am going to cover which includes basic control structure of spc that is stored program control second one is centralized stored program control third one is distributed stored program control and the final one is advantages of stored program control in telephone switching so these are the topics that we have covered or that we will be covering in today's session so let's move ahead with the first topic so first topic is about basic control structure of spc so basically the spc uses processors designed to meet the various requirements of the exchange more than one processor are used for the reliability so basically in spc we require a processor that is going to have the storage of all the programs or the instruction which has to be executed one after the other then also the spc system uses distributed software and hardware architectures to carry over the maintenance functions of switching system a separate processor is also used so these are the basic features about stored program control that is our switching system nextly this is the structure of stored program control so basically in spc exchange we have following four features connected it with bi directional line that is ancillary control maintenance control trunk control and line control so in line control we have the controlling of the media or the path between the call person and the calling subscriber then in ancillary control we have the control of the movement or the path which has been connected with a to person in maintenance control they are maintaining whether a certain path established is maintained for a certain duration of time or not and in trunk control the dialing part is initiated so that is taken care by all the four types of control in spc switching system so this is the basic block diagram or the basic understanding about spc exchange system nextly there are two types in spc exchanges namely centralized spc that is centralized stored program control and distributed stored program control there are two approaches to organize stored program control how the stored program control can be organized based on the two different types of spc that is centralized and decentralized centralized and distributed so basically in centralized in this control all control equipment is replaced by a single processor which must be quite powerful so that is the role of centralized spc the next type is the distributed spc in this control the control functions are shared by many processors within the exchange itself so 
in centralized all the control equipments are controlled by single processor while in distributed many processors are sharing the control functions so that is the difference between these two types of stored program control processes nextly this is the diagram of how to organize stored program control so typically first one is the centralized stored program control organization which will have the lines from where the data or the path is going to uh, set up then it will be distributed to signal distributors it will be connected to the processor and maintenance control processor is going to store that data in form of memory and further from processor we have another data which will be coming from the secondary storage where the program storage and call recordings are kept for the storing purpose in the scanner section from lines whatever the data will be gathered will be going to the processor unit so this is the basic process of centralized stored program control nextly another kind of organization will be distributed stored program but before that what is centralized stored program control early electronic switching systems are centralized stored program control exchanges and used a single processor to perform the exchange function so all the functions are carried out by a single processor in centralized stored program control presently centralized exchanges uses dual processor for high reliability all the control equipments are replaced by the processor then a dual processor architecture may be reconfigured or configured to operate in standby mode a uh, synchronous duplex mode and load sharing mode so these are the activities which are covered in centralized stored program control now basically what is a standby mode in standby mode in this mode one processor is active and the other is in standby mode both hardware and software wise the standby processor brought online when the active processor fails so when the original one processor which was in the active state that fails at that time we are utilizing the standby processor otherwise meanwhile the hardware and software part of the other processor will stay in standby mode so that is the standby mode now what is the another kind of mode that is synchronous duplex mode in synchronous duplex mode hardware coupling is provided between two processors which execute the same set of instructions and compare the results continuously if a mismatch occurs the faculty or the faulty processor is identified and the taken out of service immediately so this is the duplex mode in this the two processors are executed the instruction at a time only if one of them is having a mismatch then the faulty processor is identified and then it is kept out of service the third type of mode is the load sharing mode in load sharing operation an incoming call is assigned randomly or in a predetermined order to one of the processors which then handles the call right through the completion thus both the processors are active simultaneously and they share the load and the resources dynamically so this is a kind of two way mode here for the processors are also working they both are active at a time and they are equally sharing the load such that task can be completed earlier so this is the best mode among all the three modes the another time of spc the other type of spc is the distributed stored program control 
The introduction of distributed store program control enabled customers to be provided with a wider range of services than those available with centralized and electromechanical switching system. The distributed SPC offers better availability and reliability than the centralized SPC. So this is all about distributed SPC. Then vertical decomposition, the exchange environment is divided into several blocks and each block is assigned to a processor that performs all control functions related to that block of equipment. This is about the distributed SPC. Here there are many processors who are performing all the control function. In that we had two types that is horizontal and vertical decomposition. In horizontal decomposition, each processor performs one or more or some of the exchange control functions. So this is about distributed store program control. This is the network of distributed SPC which is having the distribution of lines having all connected with the telephones. The switching part is with the processor every time and all the systems are connected together. That is distributed store program control. Now, what are the advantages of store program control in telephone switching? So, let's understand about the advantages like we know what is SPC, what is distributed SPC, what is centralized SPC. Now let's understand why we are using this SPC by understanding its advantages. So the first advantage of SPC in telephone switching is easy to control. It is very easy to control such kind of SPC. Then it is easy to maintain. Maintenance of SPC in telephone switching is quite low. So that is another advantage. Then the other advantage includes flexibility. The network or the SPC connection of the processor and its arrangement is quite flexible in telephone switching. The fourth and the most important is the wide range of services that can be provided to all the customers. So obviously the wide range or the range or the coverage which is provided to the customer that is of prime importance because because of that only our application is going to work if it is useful to the customer. The fifth one is increased level of automotive in switching. So basically there is an increase in level of automotive in switching and that is an advantage of stored program control system. So following are the advantages in SPC that is stored program control. Nextly in this session we have seen what are the classifications of switching system and in electromechanical we have two types that is store program control and electronic switching and in this electronic electromechanical system we had two SPCs that is distributed and centralized SPC what is centralized SPC what is distributed SPC that we saw in terms of the number of processors they are accommodating and the number of different modes which are incorporated in centralized SPC and distributed SPC and following are the advantages of SPC in telephonic switching system. So following are the references for the topics which we have covered today. You can refer any of this. The first book that is by Vishwanathan T based on telecommunication switching system and network is already available on net in PDF form so you can get the soft copy easily if you are not able to have the hardbound. So that is already available otherwise you can refer the third one also by V.S. Bagar that is the technical publication. 
while the second one is for specifically network protocols of telecommunication which will include few concepts of telecommunication network that we will be studying in the later part of our telecommunication subject so these are the reference books which you can refer for the topics which we have covered today and in the upcoming session we will be moving ahead with the further topics of our unit 1 that is electronic switching system nextly we will be seeing what are the different types of stages in our switching system so thank you so much for watching this session in the upcoming session we will move further with our unit 1 of telecommunication engineering thank you so much thank you once again